I'm right next to the power plant uh, going towards Kalasatama. But this is a power plant. Um, it's apparently one of the most sustainable power plants. I have all the security gear as you can see. Um, but they say that uh, they use 80% of energy production from uh, sources that would go unutilized if it wasn't for this plant. So it's a very, very sustainable and a new way of, of energy production. So we'll take a, a tour in here and let you know why this plant is so extraordinary. The seen the world through my screen of travel you can smell? This is the seawater. There's no need to touch or feel because nothing here is real. Uh, Helen totally warms up Helsinki City. We have big power plants heating the city. Uh, and by meaning that is that uh, we heat up the domestic water, yeah. we heat up the batteries. So you get the hot shower and your, your house is warm. This water, we take it into the plant, we heat it up again, and, and it's approximately 88 degrees Celsius. And again, it goes to the customers. Okay. So with a heat pump, you can replace some of uh, the heat production, but of okay. course you still need uh, electricity. 80% yeah. of the production here is would not be used otherwise, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. The most important thing is that uh, we have those um, two massive uh, silos underground, which, was, which were used, uh, they storage oil there uh, in the 80s. And they, were, they have been empty for years and years. Okay. So now our project is to fill it up with uh, uh, hot water, yeah. which is, yeah, um, it's uh, leftover leftover energy in in uh, for example Helen's power plant. They're not gonna they're not gonna crush it. It's gonna stay as a museum, nice. as a coal power plant museum. Apparently, the program about sustainable energy is happening here, and the guides know about it, but they don't really know much, and they are not telling it to the people, so nobody really knows what's going on. Uh, we don't really know much no? about it either. A lot of companies combine it with their annual training day that they have, so they have yeah, a small conference, they have the training, then they go for lunch, have the tour afterwards, and then they continue with their own program. Back in the day, when zoos were, like modern zoos were founded more than 100 years ago, the point was to take animals from the wild and put them into a small cage so that people can, people can see them. Yeah. So nowadays it's all about conservation and education. My name is Amanda Heinel and I'm an Australian who's been living in Finland for about 10 years now. So the English name is Edible Park and the Finnish is Sertava Puisto. So uh, Slow Food is an international organisation and it's uh, started in Italy in 1989. So it's just a volunteer, uh, so we're uh, so no, it's not a big glamorous organisation, so actually it's really easy to get involved. Um, so I think it's educating people that, that you can grow your own food in an urban environment. But I think the sustainability part is, is growing as well. How you deal with waste, so you know, the kids here can see that nothing is wasted. Uh, you, you, know, you eat all of the vegetable or use it in some way, or if you can't use it, you uh, recycle it in some way, like it's used as compost. Or Trying to grow the parsnip. I have understood why parsnip is a little bit more expensive than carrots. It's because it's quite more difficult to grow it. I think that's probably not what a smart city is. I think technology has to be involved, otherwise it's like, you wouldn't call it a smart city. I like guess you'd call it like a uh, old-fashioned city. Smart seems to be like technology winning. I decided to come today to Helsinki University to ask a researcher from here about a project she had been working on, that is the HIMA metering system. Um, this was a monitoring system for um, energy in, in Kalasatama and it has been installed in some of the buildings there. Um, so let's see what she has to say. I'm Eva Heiskanen, uh, I'm a professor at the Con Center for Consumer Society Research here at the University of Helsinki. I, most of my work 
is on um, how people adopt new technologies and especially technologies that are supposed to make our life more sustainable. Because of the image of Kalasatama, most residents have already been expecting um, that there will be something new and different. That this is a new and futuristic area and I see um, as an important point also then we, we fit all these new solutions of which many 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 have been tested now in, in Kalasatama into the everyday life of people. And, and I am also have been a little critical of, of the concept of smart city uh, because it easily is sort of just focusing on digital solutions and big data and, and, and lots of collection of data. But everybody who um, is developing smart cities should also read steampunk science fiction and think about <laughs> other ways of being smart. So I think smart means well designed and then it can be can be a mechanical, it can be a biological or it can be a digital or it can be a human operated system. So there are many ways of being smart and we have now a very strong focus here only on the digitalization and I hope we could expand this to understanding other aspects of smartness.